Hello everybody and welcome to my summer favorites video. Um, instead of doing this monthly as in May, June, July kind of thing, I decided to just throw it all into one video for the season. So it's summertime in the northern hemisphere and this is my summer favorites. I'm going to include some witchy stuff, some health and beauty stuff, a book or two. It's going to be fun. So I'm starting off here at our altar. I've already given an altar tour um, in a previous video, but really this altar just represents just home for me. Um, I'm in our new apartment. If you're familiar with the past couple of videos I've uploaded, you know that we had to move, my husband's graduating, uh, so it's been kind of crazy. So we are in a bigger better apartments and this is the altar that we put together so this is uh, the first witchy favorite that I'm going to share. Uh, some other witchy favorites are actually our plants or as I call them our plant babies which as you can see we have one, two, three <laughs> four and five plant babies in our living room. So let me start with the big guy. He's actually taller than I am. His name is Treebeard. We have no idea what type of plant he is. <laughs> we have him in, we have all of our plant babies in uh, clay pots, but he keeps growing and growing and pretty soon he might hit the ceiling. But he is our big gorgeous tree baby. And if anyone knows what species this is, let me know in the comments below because like I said, we kind of, we have no idea. Um, some friends of ours were moving back to Chile. And of course, when you're moving abroad, you can't really take plants with you. <laughs> Especially not something this big. So we inherited him and he's probably grown about a foot since we got him. So that's Treebeard, and shout out to any Lord of the Rings nerds out there who get that reference. <laughs> and our most recent acquisition lives over here. Some aloe vera plants. Um, some friends of my parents gifted them with about six or seven aloe vera plants, and we ended up taking a couple of them with us. So these little babies are new. And their names are Alex and Veronica. Get it? Aloe Vera, Alex, Veronica. <laughs> and so far they're doing good. These are my first aloe vera plants, so hopefully I don't kill them. And if we turn around here, trying to make the transitions as smooth as possible. Here we have Pedro and Stella Star. <laughs> Pedro is our first orchid. Um, I believe he, she <laughs> is a Phalaenopsis orchid or one of the most common types of orchids that you see here in the United States in grocery stores and whatnot. Um, he was a gift to us, a housewarming present, and before Pedro I had never had an orchid before. Um, I had to do a lot of research because I know orchids are a little they're not your common house plant, like this one here. <laughs> um, but so far, she he's doing good. I had to trim the flower spikes because they died off, and so now he's focusing on growing his leaves. And if anybody has any tips or tricks for growing orchids, especially in the humid south, so Georgia, <laughs> Or in that area, please let me know. But so far, so good. I haven't killed it yet. So, <laughs> yeah. So, um, I did find a really good orchid YouTube channel. Uh, I think it's called Miss Orchid Girl or something like that. And she uploads videos daily and she she's like the orchid queen. She has over a hundred orchids of all different types and varieties. and. So it was really informative, so I've been educating myself because I really don't want this one to, to die because I messed it up. So we have it in the miracle Grow Orchid Bark mix. Also, 
in a clay pot with the, the holes here because I know they have to breathe a lot and in the wild they grow on the sides of trees so you don't want to bury their root system because that will choke them out and cause root rot and stuff. So, so far so good with that little baby. And the next plant baby is still a star. She is, what species is this? A Hemigraphis alternata or purple waffle plant. I just got her at Walmart and she has grown beautifully. It's very easy to take care of, just water every seven to ten days depending on how humid your climate is and she's been growing like gangbusters. All right, let's go see our other two plant babies which we have in the office. Hee hee hee! Hi! Say hello! No. <laughs> this is my husband's office. Oh, by the way, the number one witchy summer favorite is this man's accomplishment. <laughs> He's getting embarrassed, don't worry. You won't be on camera too long. But he is Dr. Husband Man. He defended his dissertation last week. So, yay! He graduated! And he's gonna be a lecturer. Yay! Yep. <laughs> yep, he's embarrassed now. Okay, don't worry, you're not on camera anymore. Had to brag about you though. So, okay, so this is the same species we think as tree beard. Again, if anybody has any idea what this is, please let us know. But this guy, his name is Albert. For, you know, why not? Why not name your plant Albert? <laughs> And he has the same kind of uh, thick stem or trunk as tree beard. And he's also been growing really well. He has some new growth here at the top. So that's Albert. And last is our peace lily. And her name is Fabiola. And she's very pretty and glossy and leans toward the light outside. All right. Now let's check out some other of my favorites. Say bye! Bye! <laughs> Alright, so let's talk about some health and beauty products first. And I hope you enjoyed our little tour of my plant babies <laughs> and uh, another little altar tour. I apologize if you hear a strange humming in the background. It's our air conditioner and it's just too hot in Georgia for me to turn it off. <laughs> I just got out of the shower so I still feel a little humid and hot. Okay, health products. Let's start off with some tea I got yesterday actually. Trader Joe's. I'm going to be talking a lot about Trader Joe's here in a second. Um, this is their organic ginger turmeric herbal tea. And I got this mostly for my husband because he's been experiencing a lot of acid reflux, uh, especially in the evenings. And we're experimenting, switching out some teas and stuff to see exactly what could be the culprit or the cause of that besides stress, which doesn't help anything. Um, so he loves to drink tea in the evening with our evening meal. Specifically, he loves the Celestial Seasoning Sleepy Time Tea combined with chamomile. But... Um, after doing a little bit of research, I learned that for some people, not everybody, but for some people, actually spearmint and mint can uh, cause acid reflux. So I got this tea to kind of switch that out. So ginger is really good for the tummy. Turmeric is just really good overall. Um, ginger and turmeric are both root uh, spices, I guess. <laughs> root plants and they're related and this tea contains organic ginger root, organic turmeric, organic licorice, orange peel, orange oil, and black pepper. And the black pepper is just there to add a little bit of spiciness but it's very very subtle. So this tea is really delicious. Now it's summertime and it's time to stay hydrated especially if you live in hot uh, semi-tropical <laughs> or at least it feels semi-tropical climates like Georgia. So this bottle is made by Life Factory. I got it toward the beginning of the summer. Um, it's made of glass and I specifically wanted a glass water bottle to 
uh, keep myself hydrated because glass is very very safe you don't have to worry about any chemicals or phytoestrogens from plastics leaking into the water that you're drinking um, it's easy to clean and it's also really good if you like to infuse your water with uh, lemon or a, a piece of lime or some lemon juice or anything like that because sometimes with plastic bottles and even some metal bottles that I've had in the past, anytime I put a slice of lemon or anything that wasn't water into the bottle, the, the flavor stayed. It kind of glued itself to the plastic and it was very hard to wash off and make it go away. Glass doesn't do that, so that's the main reason I wanted this glass bottle. I love it. Of course, glass, you have to be extra careful and make sure not to break it, but it's very easy to clean. Um, I guess technically this is dishwasher safe. I don't like to put it in the dishwasher just to be, you know, safe with it. But I just rinse it out with soapy water every couple of days. The lid is made of plastic, but this little piece of the lid is made of the same kind of rubbery or latex material that the bottle cover is made out of. So let's get into some of the beauty products that I have fallen in love with. First, Pacifica Perfume. This is Tibetan Mountain Temple. And look how gorgeous this packaging is. This brand, um, it is featured in places like Whole Foods. I got this at the local health food store called Earth Fair which I believe is a small chain in the southeast. So I'm not sure where else Earth Fair might be, but I know it's where I'm at now. <laughs> um, but you can order this online from the Pacifica website. Their perfumes are, let's see if I can get this to focus, 100% vegan, cruelty-free, free of parabens, phthalates, and propylene glycol, whatever that is. So the main ingredients are alcohol, of course, like um, natural grain alcohol, like most perfumes. And their fragrance blend in essential oils and water. So this is a vegan brand. Um, it's very affordable. I love Dolce & Gabbana's The One line. They have a cologne for men, which is the cologne my husband uses. And they also have a perfume for women. But that shit is expensive. I mean, maybe I'm just a penny pincher. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I'm not the type of person who's going to spend $120 on a bottle of perfume. I'm just not. And the one by Dolce & Gabbana, their perfume for women, if I, I believe their ounce-sized bottle costs like, I've seen it anywhere from like $50 to $80, depending on where you're buying it. This stuff and this beautiful packaging and this beautiful bottle it's one ounce and it costs twenty dollars <laughs> that's something I can afford that's that's splurging for me so I was researching into their perfumes and trying to pick a scent and I just fell in love with this based on the description on the website I just knew this would be perfect for me I love earthy spicy um, scents when it comes to perfume and incense and the Tibetan, Tibetan Mountain Temple perfume it has the earthiness and spiciness of like cardamom and clove that's like the base notes and then the middle notes would be orange and citrus and then the top notes would be ginger and so that just, it's so delicious. I'm wearing it right now. The scent lasts all day, especially if you spray a little bit on like your scarf or your jacket or whatever you might be wearing. In addition to spraying a little bit on your, on your, you know, on your neck or your wrists. It's just so, so amazing. And it's so affordable. I, I found the one, <laughs> the perfume for me. So yeah, check it out. Check out their website. They have all sorts of other beauty products, which I have not tried, but I do know for sure their perfumes are legit. Okay, now let's talk about hair and face care. So 
Trader Joe's. I told you I would be talking about Trader Joe's again. Right now, they are selling 100% organic argan oil. This, and it comes in these boxes. I went yesterday to stock up because sometimes with Trader Joe's, you never know how long they're going to carry a product. So I now have these two unopened bottles and the bottle I'm using right now. This is 1.7 fluid ounces for $7. And from what I've seen, I did some price comparisons online. 100% organic argan oil is not cheap. And I bought all three of these bottles for 21 bucks, and sometimes just one bottle can cost $21. So please, if you live near Trader Joe's and you want to use some organic argan oil, go out there and get it while they still carry it. Um, so yeah, the packaging is beautiful. And the bottle itself is beautiful. And this oil, oh my god, I've only been using it for about a week or two, and... I've just fallen in love with it. I know there it's kind of the hip new trendy oil to use in hair care products especially. Um, but the reason I haven't bought shampoos and conditioners and stuff that have said that they contain argan oils because they often contain lots of other stuff. I almost said a bad word. Shit. They also contain lots of other shit. For example, this was the leave-in conditioner by Cure that I've been using for over a year. This is my second bottle and this stuff lasts a long time. So I used to spray this in my hair every day after getting out of the shower as a leave-in conditioner and detangler. And overall the list of ingredients is very hippy-dippy. It's purified water, um, aloe vera extract, organic, blackberry fruit extract, rose hip extract, calendula, flower extract and all sorts of stuff. It does advertise that it has, if I get this into focus, argan oil and even argan stem cell, whatever that is. But when I looked closely, I realized ethyl laurel arganate, I guess that is related to the argan oil, but hydroxypropyl starch phosphate, I mean it just, it does contain some ingredients that I can't pronounce and I don't know what they are. That doesn't necessarily mean that they're bad, but I have noticed that since using this and also another leave-in conditioner that I've since thrown out, um, I've noticed that the ends of my hair were starting to get really dry and that's because both this and the other leave-in that I threw out, they both contain alcohol in them. So even though I was spraying this onto the ends of my hair to help condition and prevent split ends, the ends of my hair kept looking dry and brittle. So um, I decided, you know, even the hippy dippy brands like Acure and other brands, they still add in some stuff that you don't necessarily know what it is without going down a rabbit hole on Google. <laughs> And, you know, if I want a condition, if I want a lightweight leave-in conditioner to put into my hair or a lightweight hair serum, why not just go directly to the pure source, right? So I have fallen in love with this. I, um, I do not use any heating or styling products in or on my hair. I don't even own a blow dryer or flat iron or curling iron. My hair is not dyed or anything. <laughs> I just have really fine, easily tangled hair, like baby fine hair. Um, so it's really hard for me to find a leave-in conditioner or leave-in hair serum that doesn't look greasy and weighs my hair down too much. But this stuff is amazing. It's a very, very lightweight oil, very thin oil. It absorbs incredibly easily. I've even started using it on my face, so after I get out of the shower in the morning, I put two or three drops on my hand and rub it into my face and neck, and then in the evening, after I wash my face with Trader Joe's Tea Tree Oil Face Wash, I will put a few drops um, on my face and then rub some in under my eyes as an under eye serum. It does not clog my pores. I've actually noticed just in the past couple days of me using it, my face feels incredibly smooth. 
and well hydrated and I haven't had any breakouts which is surprising because uh, it's my moon time and that's usually when I break out the worst so I use this in the evening um, first just two or three drops rubbed into my skin and under my eyes and then after putting that in just in the evening I use my own homemade facial oil slash serum that I made a few months ago which is just equal parts jojoba, grape seed, and apricot kernel oil which are three really good very lightweight oils um, that are really good for people with acne prone skin or oily skin and I mixed in about seven to ten drops of tea tree oil and about five to seven drops of lavender essential oil into this so it's very diluted essential oils um, just for their healing properties for breakouts and whatnot so yeah I use this both in the evening for my hair uh, sorry for my facial skin and face regime or regimen <laughs> and I've just especially since adding the argan oil, I've just noticed incredible results. Uh, Trader Joe's, if you live near one, they also have 100% pure jojoba oil, which is really good for the skin, very gentle, and it's another very lightweight oil. It's also really good for the hair. So before I wash my hair with shampoo and conditioner, I'll put uh, some of this on the ends of my hair and on the hair shaft to kind of pre-treat and pre-condition my hair. And then after washing my hair, I put this on, and it doesn't weigh my hair down. It actually feels like my hair gets less tangled, um, which is amazing because I have the most tangle-prone hair in the universe. <laughs> um, so yeah, please, if you live near Trader Joe's, go out there and stock up on some argan oil because I've just fallen in love with it and check your beauty products and if you notice that despite you know no matter how many times you might spray in and put in whatever hair serum if you still notice that your hair keeps drying out it might be because it has some alcohol to thin out the oils and the beauty products so if you want a, an alternative to that argan oil is great if it doesn't weigh my hair down and if it doesn't make my hair look greasy it'll work on anybody's hair, believe me. <laughs> I have the finest, most tangly hair ever, and this has been a lifesaver so far, so yes. All right, let's get into the fun witchy stuff. Now, as far as rocks and crystals go, I have these little beauties. So if you see my most recent, I don't know, update or altar tour, <laughs> You've seen this guy, this is my mala bead set, and even though I haven't really had time to sit down and work with the mala beads as um, meditation or prayer beads, they are made of bloodstone, and bloodstone has just become my go-to crystal. It is so grounding. I also have a, a palm stone in the shape of a heart made of bloodstone. Um, but bloodstone, it's been so healing and grounding. I um, associate it with my matron deity. It's just been such a great experience and so beneficial for me. So bloodstone is definitely on my list of summer witchy favorites. And these little beauties I actually got recently when I went fishing with my dad. My husband came along. Uh, for the 4th of July, we went up to Kentucky to visit my parents and my friends up there. And my dad likes to take us fishing. And even though we didn't catch anything, we went to the creek that we've been fishing at for over 20 years. It's in the middle of nowhere, Kentucky. <laughs> um, but they stock it with rainbow trout. And um, Kentucky, millions and millions of years ago, used to be the bottom of the ocean, the bottom of, a, I believe, an inland sea. So that's where the coal comes from, right? The organic material that for thousands of years settled at the bottom and then eventually became coal. That's why Kentucky is known for its coal. But um, at this creek, um, on the banks of the creek, there's lots of little rocks and things, and it's very, very easy to find fossils. So these are little ocean fossils. Well, this guy isn't. But this looks like some kind of tube creature fossil 
maybe coral, this guy too. And this is actually, I guess, a hagstone because there's a hole in the middle of it. Can a fossil be a hagstone? I don't know. But I'm going to call this my hagstone. <laughs> it's my very first hagstone, which is kind of cool. And then this guy has some imprints on it from, I believe, shells. There's lots of shells and these kind of coral looking fossils in the area. Very easy to find. I always find them every time we go to that creek. So you can see that. Which is great. Beautiful tie to my childhood favorite fishing spot with my dad. And then this rock is just kind of cool because it kind of looks like a cube even though I know it's not a perfect cube but it has that shape. So I thought it looked kind of cool liked what it kind of represents, stability, solidness. <laughs> so that stays on our altar. Um, another witchy favorite is this book, When God Was a Woman. Um, I talked about this book earlier. That was before I had started reading it. I'm still very much at the beginning of the book. I think I'm just beginning chapter three. I'm working my way through it. I don't have a lot of time for pleasure reading, so... Um, but I, I already love it. I mean, there's some issues with it, or issues I have with it, but mostly it's mostly, <laughs> mostly it's just the verbiage that uh, the author uses, but it, it was written in the 70s, so words like primitive weren't, you know, they didn't have the same kind of negative connotations back then as they do now, at least. Um, so I'll go into more depth into this book, but um, I'm really enjoying it. I'm learning a lot. There's some really great summaries of uh, past archaeological studies um, that she does in the book, and it's just very enlightening and empowering. So, great book. I'll talk about that in more detail later in a future video once I finally finish it. And another witchy favorite for this summer is Soul Cards by Deborah Koff Chapin or Chapin. I know this uh, Oracle deck has been out for whew, years and years and years. I believe it originally came out in the 1990s, maybe, maybe early 2000s. Um, there are two uh, decks within this Soul Cards series that she did. This is Soul Cards 1. And actually, this is my husband's deck. I got this for him, oh, I can't remember, for his birthday maybe or for our anniversary. Ooh, this is one of my favorite cards. Just the images, um, the cards are big. I have big hands. I like that there's no borders on the images, so the images just kind of leak into your reality, so to speak. And there's very little description, if any description at all, in the guidebook. She does offer some um, reading templates for the cards. But they're really just designed to, to make you reflect on the impact the images have on you, which is very liberating and it helps you to kind of create your own meanings for the cards. And it gives you the flexibility to change those meanings over time. This is another great card. So I, I just love the artwork, I love the style. I'm thinking about buying myself Soul Cards 2, which is very similar, the same style as these. So that way between me and my husband, we'll have both sets. It's just gorgeous. So yeah, definitely a witchy favorite for this summer. And as soon as I can afford it, I'm getting Soul Cards 2. Just look at that. Look at that image. Oh, love it. So last, but definitely, definitely not least, of my summer 2017 witchy favorites would be this book, The Garden of Fertility by Katie Singer. This book has revolutionized how I relate to my menstrual cycles and fertility cycles. It's revolutionized my understanding of those cycles, my understanding of 
the fluctuation and changing of different hormones in my body and how everything's connected. It's just, God, I, I just recently bought my sister a copy because her birthday is this coming Monday and I think anyone with a uterus who experiences cycles <laughs> should read this and anyone who is a partner with anyone who has a uterus should also read this. It's just been revolutionary. And I know I, I briefly mentioned this book before when I, um, I think I did an altar tour and talked about some recent books I had purchased. And I have to admit, when I first got this book, I was afraid that Katie Singer would be writing from the Catholic um, natural family planning method. And so the official Catholic rules about sexuality and reproduction are very homophobic, transphobic, and sexist. Um, they do not permit the use of any form of hormonal birth control or even any form of barrier methods from condoms to diaphragms, cervical caps, spermicide, or even, I believe, pulling out. It's just very heteronormative and a very simplified view of human sexuality as just being in the service of reproducing, which, ugh, gross. So I was mentally prepared or preparing myself to kind of like skim over those sections anytime Singer might have mentioned that or talked about that as the main reason for practicing fertility awareness. But actually, after reading her introduction, I realized that no, she actually does not identify as Christian at all. And she talks about her own frustrations with trying to find a teacher in fertility awareness who was not Christian or Catholic. Because apparently she reached out to the natural family planning organizers and teachers and they refused to teach her because she was sexually active and she wasn't married to her partner and she wasn't Catholic. So this book is actually the product of her own search and commitment to finding um, more secular uh, teachers and practitioners of natural, of not natural family planning, of fertility awareness and um, her commitment to spreading that knowledge to anybody who has a uterus. This is LGBTQ friendly, I'd say. She includes, in a lot of the chapters, she includes kind of testimonials of um, women who talk about their experiences with uh, fertility awareness. And some of the women do identify as lesbian and say, you know, they don't practice fertility awareness uh, for procreation or preventing procreation because they or their partners aren't interested in having children, but they do practice it because through fertility awareness and the method and charting your cycles, you actually can become aware or more aware of your overall health. So fertility health, and notice I'm using the word fertility, not reproductive health, because Having children is a choice, and just because you have a uterus doesn't mean you have to have children. So, anyway, through awareness of fertility um, health, that health is connected to your overall health, to your thyroid, to your hormonal balances, to so many things. And I've learned all this through this book. Um, so I've actually started charting my own cycles. And let me see if I can find an example of a chart here. This is basically what the charts look like. You take your basal body temperature in the morning at around the same time every morning or as close as you can get to the same time every morning. You check your cervical mucus every day and you chart and it just it's so eye-opening. Eye this, this book has been revolutionary and I cannot recommend it enough. Um, it merits its own video. Once I get more experience charting and I kind of reread some sections because I flew through it because I just couldn't put it down, <laughs> um, I will definitely be making a more detailed video about this book. Um, so yeah, just amazing. And so fertility awareness, it's more LGBTQ friendly, 
less sexist version of natural family planning, a more secular, uh, pagan-friendly version of natural family planning, and no, you do not have to use this uh, method to prevent pregnancy. It's, it's not just for that. Um, my husband and I, you know, we don't feel comfortable just using this method to prevent pregnancy. We still use condoms, but I've used it to become more aware of my body and to kind of track my overall health and my reproductive health. And it's just, oh my God, I just can't stop gushing about this book. So yes, if you are interested in gauging your um, fertility health, but also your overall health, and if you have a uterus or if your partner has a uterus um, and you're not interested in hormonal birth control um, or even IUDs or anything like that, and you want to find a way, maybe a more natural way of achieving or preventing pregnancy or even just a natural way of gauging your health overall, please read this book. It has detailed information about the biology and the mechanics of the reproductive or fertility cycle, detailed nutrition information, detailed information about the signs to look out for, um, to see how healthy your thyroid is and how the hormonal system is all connected. It's just, it's really great. Really, really great. So yes, please be on the lookout for um, a video from me about this book in the near future in a couple more cycles when I get the hang of uh, charting. <laughs> okay.